<laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Tuesday lunch chat. You just barely caught me putting a hat on as as this video started. I'm wearing um, our new hat this week that I'm going to talk about. This is the Celilo Falls hat and club members. You guys get this for free with your code. Make sure you either check your email or the club homepage for that. Um, and this is a really fun hat to make. And I feel like it's on my head sideways, but there's no sideways. <laughs> Let's try this again. Oh, I guess maybe what I wanted was that little motif more centered. There we go. So yes, Lila Falls. This is a um, historic lost uh, falls that was uh, really important to area tribes. And um, it was flooded out when the dam was put in near the Dells. So um, I really encourage you, if you're curious about that, to do some reading um, on our product page. We have a link to an informational page from um, some tribal fishing commission, I think. Um, anyway, it's a it's a historic area that that no longer exists, but is recognized. And um, so, the, yes, here's here's a side view or a top view. I don't know if my head's in the picture or not. <laughs> And the pattern um, actually gives you two options. You get to uh, choose from making it in DK weight, which is what I'm wearing, or in bulky weight. And they really come out with very different looks to them, depending on what you do. So, um, yes, super, super fun. Um, September's new pattern. Here's a, here's a better picture of the top. I don't know why it's so hard for me to orient here. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll show you a little bit about the yarns we used in this example. And um, oh, it feels really good, you guys. Those of you who have already ordered this yarn, you are going to be so happy. It feels amazing. Amazing. So I brought, I brought in a few combos because we did ours up in the Universal Wool Pop, which is Wool Bamboo Blend. So already feels really great. And the Shoppel Edition 3, which is a merino that self-stripes. So let's see. These two, I thought were a really pretty combo. You want good contrast um, so that the pattern really shows. So let me hold up the hat one more time here. Here we go. <laughs> I feel like I don't, I don't love wearing hats when my hair is straight. Feel like it looks a lot better when it's curly so in here i've got this kind of darker one um these are all in german so i don't know what the name is but the color number is 2328 and then i'm holding up um darling pink in the wool pop next to it this has like purple green etc i think this would be a great combo um i love this one right here this we have 2301 in the shopple and brambles Brambles in the wool pop, which is kind of like a deep mauve, but I think this would be a really great combo. And let's see, what was my third one? Oh, here we go. Um, let's see here. There's this new comment assist thing that's automatically showing the comments. Okay, so this is denim in the wool pop and 2401 in the shopple. That would also make a great combo. So. Yeah, lots of fun ways to do this. Also great to use stash. Um, I just happened to use a striping yarn here for my contrast color, but you don't have to do it that way at all. Um, I did bring in a fun new bulky option because we have, what the heck? There's like a little red mite or a spider mite or something crawling on my, that's bizarre. Get out. No, no, you don't want you here. Okay. <laughs> so in the bulky options, we've got this brand new yarn called Cinema. And this is from Rossetti Yarns. And this yarn feels amazing. It's 109 yards and it's made with um, wool, a touch of nylon and a little bit of cashmere. And that's why it feels so, so good. And it's kind of in this space dyed colorway. So while this yarn does not stripe, it's not one of the self stripers, it would still look really good as the background to your color work. I'll hold the hat up one more time giving in this example here. So you would use Rossetti in place of the silver in my in my hand. And then you would use the, I mean, sorry, in place of the shopple, And then you would use the dark purple um, in place of the silver 
So I think this would be a really great combo, Rosetta yarns and vintage chunk, or you could also do Rosetta yarns and uh, Barocco Mercado. So really, really, really fun. Uh, Julia also just finished a brand new sample in the cinema from Rossetti. So we're going to show that off on Friday, probably. Um, yeah, Julia whipped out a hat. I don't know. It must have taken her like an hour. Oh, yeah, I think cinema would be great for that lullaby baby blanket, too, for the bulky version. Jill just 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 mentioned that that's the blanket that we showed you guys last week that has the chevron patterns that Jill knit up in DK. It offers many, many weights um, that you could do it in. So um, I got to look back through these <laughs> comments so that I can. Uh, it, everything was just scrolling by. Burr, you just got your shipping notification. I got my helper here. She's here for three more days, three more work days. I mean, after that, it'll be all me Monday, Tuesday. Um, okay. Hello, 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 hello. Okay. We dove right in today. So um, I missed all the comments. Um, some other big news is I want to announce the winners of our slow crawl prizes here at Not Another Hat. So if you participated in the Pacific Northwest Slow Yarn Crawl over the summer months, um, at the end, each shop draws three winners. And so we've got a $25 gift card, a $50 gift card, and a $75 gift card. And I'm gonna announce those winners right now. I drew these yesterday out of the box. We had so many entries, which means we had so many people either visit in person or shop online. We put your name in the box if you did an order. And so we've we've drawn our three winners and I'll be contacting you um, with information with your, for your gift cards, how to use your gift cards, et cetera. So our $25 gift card winner is Sue Severinson Bray from Prosser. Congratulations, Sue. And our $50 winner is Susan Stilts from Olympia. Congratulations, Susan. And our $75 winner is Elaine Jones from West Richland. So we have all Washington winners here. Um, congratulations, ladies. I will be in touch. Please check your emails for information from me on your gift cards. Woo! Congratulations. And thank you to everybody who participated in the Slow Yarn Crawl all summer. It's a really great, really great um, thing. And I, I, we're lucky that we have those organizers willing to do it. So uh, speaking of crawls. It, this Saturday is the big day for our stop on the Have a Ball Fall Crawl, the virtual crawl that takes place over two weekends with 36 shops. And if you've been watching our Facebook page today, I've shared, I think, three different pictures of prizes that are that we have to give away. Every shop has to give away in this year's um, crawl. We'll give away some of them live during our stop and then some of them in our newsletters, et cetera, um, throughout the week. So if you're interested in winning some awesome prizes with zero obligation, uh, stay tuned and make sure that you've signed up on the website for haveaballfallcrawl.com. Um, by signing up, what you do is A, you get your name entered in the big prize drawings that they've um, done. They've already done a few even before the fall. I mean, to the crawl, <laughs> but B, you get those really, really crucial uh, links to the Zoom sessions. So um, that way you can watch them and catch them live and they will be replayed. But also the, the bummer thing about replay is we've put together special products um, that are in somewhat limited um, quantities and exclusive, exclusive bundles. So there's no guarantee they'll still be around if you can't catch us live. So um that's going to be exciting. That's happening this Saturday. Uh, gosh. Okay. So I got some knitting done this weekend. After our um, chat Friday, I started the lace project that I talked about. The sweater I was wearing on Friday, which was called the featherweight cardigan or featherweight wrap. Featherweight wrap. I, Jill made me do this. It's Jill's fault. I got started. Let me see if I can make sense of it for you. It's in its infancy, so of course it's very weird and awkward to look at. Okay, here it is. I have the upper back, and then um, I did. I've done each front, and I just joined it below the arms. So now it's a whole. <clears throat> excuse me, a whole lot of body. So here's a better idea because that's the right side there. That's the color way I'm using, and. Um, I forgot how great this pattern starts. It's in one piece and super, super straightforward. So 
really excited about that. And then um, I did also manage to work a little bit more on my Chris cardigan, the big plush soft thing. <laughs> These are my sleeves. So I've got two fronts done, the back, one pocket, and I'm this far on my two sleeves. So maybe halfway on these sleeves. So I'm looking forward to getting the sleeves done so that I can assemble all the business. And then um, the last big haul will be to do the panels for the um, front bands. And it calls for... Um, <laughs> Becca, you crack me up. Um, it calls for garter stitch bands that are only six stitches wide, I think. And so um, I might try knitting those on by um, attaching them as I go back and forth. I'm going to experiment a little bit and see because I'm really not excited to sew on a big strip all the way around. But um, we'll see. I will report back later for sure. Um, let's see here. I know lace and bulky at the same time, it gives me a very nice back and forth, Jill. <laughs> she's like lace and bulky at the same time. Yeah, she um, she's right, though, because the combination is really helpful when you're just sick of working on size 15 needles like that thing is. You can go over to the lace. It's not actually that small. I'm on a um, six for my lace, my featherweight cardigan. So um that is not terrible. I mean, the yarn is tiny, but the needles aren't. The needles are just kind of normal size. So um, it's it's good. I have two very different projects to work on. Um, in addition to <laughs> the umpteen other ones that I, I may I may have a few others. Um, in fact, I just <laughs> I just saw one. <sighs> I just dug out one that I started last November. And I, uh, oh, I can't let that one see its, see its first birthday. I really need to finish it. It's the um, yoked pullover I'm doing in the Barocco Mila Fiori Light Lux. I don't know, you guys, it, it, it's, it's old. Maybe I'll bust out some progress on that and show it to you again. Um, yeah, um, Renee, have you checked out the, the, Renee says she loves the Chris yarn. She's looking for a good pattern. The, um, designs published by Lang for that yarn, they have a little bit of a variety. So if you um, if you look for the yarn on Ravelry and then click on the little upper tab that says projects, I think that would get you to their pattern collection for it. You could also probably search for Lang Chris in patterns. Um, anyways, they've got, I think, like six designs. Um, this, this coat is just one of them. Uh, so yeah, there's some other, there's some other good ones. Uh, Diane, you're excited to do your featherweight too. Oh, but you're making your wildflower cardi. Yeah, in the Donina. So I'm thinking about maybe putting, uh, turning the featherweight cardigan into a little bit of a class, um, like an online class. So I'm making some notes as I'm going about stuff that I think would really benefit from a couple tutorials and uh, video demonstrations. So stay tuned for that. That might be coming down the pipe. Um, okay, I have to tell you guys something else. Well, I have you here. Okay, come on, shake them. He's got turned around. All right, I'm not going to get him to turn around. But these are the colorful magnets that go with those um, coconuts magnet boards that, that everyone has gone gaga over, or us included. And I have to tell you, if you feel like you don't need a new magnet board because you've already invested in some other kind, get these magnets. <laughs> a, they are really strong, like really good. And then B, they're double magnets. So all of your little tools that are magnetic will stick to these. The um, coconut stitch markers, your um, metal darning needles, even my little scissors, my stork scissors, they stick to these. They are so strong. So the problem with other magnet boards is that the um, the boards themselves and then their accessories are one-way magnets. And so the, the, like the little um, chart keeper ones, they'll stick to the board, but nothing sticks to the reverse side of them. Does that make sense? So these, there you've got magnets on both sides. They'll stick to your board and hold your pattern in place, but then also they'll hold your little um, doodads. So I am so stoked about these. It even held my bobby pin the other day <laughs> that I pulled out of my hair. <laughs> so I know they seem kind of silly. It's just six magnets and they're just little colors, 12 bucks, but they are 
really worth it, especially if you already use a magnet board. I, they are a must have addition to any magnet board setup. So yeah, boy, it feels like everything is really, really nuts right now. Um, we're getting our yarn tasting ready. We're starting to prepare those yarns. In fact, Campbell's out there winding right now. Oh, we just got our coastal back. So if you were waiting for coastal, um, we just got that restocked just like an hour ago. So check out the website. Um, the colors that we were out of are back. So, and that is one that's in our yarn tasting. So if you're looking for sampling that yarn, make sure you're, you're I think we only have three tastings left. I think we have three spots left in the in the fall yarn tasting. So, yes, yes, Chrissy, yes. <laughs> um, I think that's it. I'm just kind of a little bit frazzled. I actually had insomnia last night, and I never have insomnia. In fact, I feel bad because sometimes my husband has insomnia, and I just don't ever deal with that. And um, so I feel bad for people who can't sleep. And last night I could not sleep. I think I got three hours of sleep last night. And I think there's just maybe a little few too many balls in the air right now. And maybe also the pending move of that one to college next week. Um, which reminds me next Friday, I won't be uh, around. We'll be moving Campbell in, but I'll, I'll remind you guys of that next week. So yeah, Campbell's going to have a lot of yarn. Julia says you have a lot of yarn to wine before you can leave. I know. <laughs> she says, I know. <laughs> um, what else did I just think of right now? Oh, oh, oh. I just wanted to let you guys know that um, we're going to open an hour late on Saturday. So this coming Saturday on the 18th, we will be open at noon instead of 11. And that's because at 11, we'll be filming our stop for the crawl. And it'll just be a lot easier if we can do that without customers in the store, et cetera, and just have everything set up. And, and that way I don't have to wear a mask when I do it. And, and then we'll just open one hour late. So FYI, if you were thinking of coming in on Saturday, come at after 12. Um, are the yarns I featured today in the tasting? Uh, Christy, only cinema is this one. And then the lace, uh, the lace that I just was talking about. These are the only ones in the tasting because we did, um, we've done edition three and we'll pop in the spring, in the spring tasting. Um, Lopi throws. Yes. Thank you, Jenny. <laughs> I love you people. <laughs> Thank you. This is the last call to order one of the woven blankets from Lopi and the orders go in in two days. So if you've been on the fence about that or you were just holding off until later, um, do it. Get yours in because we have to submit our orders so that they arrive in time for shipping. Um, I think we, we turn our orders in at the end of this week. They send them to us at the end of October and we ship the first week of November, I think was the timeline for that. So, um, and I have to try to decide I am torn between two. I'm torn between one that I think would be great to put out at the holidays. And then one that just could be all the time. And I don't know if I need to, so I can't, the, the solution to just order both is maybe not prudent. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm also trying to figure out like, who could I give these to for Christmas? Because there's such great presents. Um, and there's so many styles to choose from so many. Oh, <laughs> Baba Ganoush, dang. Um, Lee, I thought, Lee says she's coming to your house for dinner, Kim. But at first, Lee, I thought that comment was for me. And I was like, really? What am I making for dinner? <laughs> He's so easily confused right now. <laughs> so, all right. This is um, the end of this very scattered and nutty live chat. But thank you for persevering all the same. <laughs> I will see y'all on Friday. Maybe on Friday we'll do some sneak peeks of the things that we're going to show, um, that we're going to feature in the fall crawl on Saturday. Maybe we'll do that. I think you should tune in on Friday. Okay, guys. Have a wonderful week. And I'll see you in a few. Toodaloo.